Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of Under the Pine Tree with our guest presenter, John Hamer. And so now I am very happy to present to you, John Hamer. Hello, everybody. Welcome. <laughs> very excited to have you here for this Under the Pine discussion. Let's go ahead and I'll share my screen here. So as with everybody, um, we in Toronto obviously had uh, this unexpected closure, which uh, none of us have ever had. This totally unprecedented. The congregation hadn't gone more than two weeks without meeting in person since 1891. And um, some of the thing that we shared, though, was with, shared with other congregations worldwide, which is to say um, uh, that was that portion of it shared. Everybody shut down, right? And so, like so many other churches, Toronto congregation shifted its services online. However, our story actually is different in terms of uh, the scale of the response to the ministry. So beyond the walls, the, our online service uh, grew to be the largest weekly gathering in community of Christ. So let's get a little bit of backstory behind before uh, the pandemic even started. So our beyond the walls ministry was actually launched back in 2015. It was originally monthly. We originally did this on Thursday evenings. But as of January 2019, we merged our online congregation and, and our in-person Sunday congregation, in part because we had so many fewer people attending on Sunday anymore. And the online congregation had already kind of grown into a, a sort of a thriving thing. So as a result of the fact that we already had a hybrid service uh, of an online congregation and an in-person congregation, that positioned us very well to be able to respond to the crisis in 2020. Um, Beyond the Walls is different from almost any, actually from every other um, uh, online ministry in the church. So it is not like what we're doing right now where we are having a, uh, a Zoom meeting, right? And so uh, it's a live stream service as opposed to a Zoom service. And so this really um, avoids the most common experience of 2020 and 2021, what we just even had a second ago when Scott was kindly telling me, you're still muted, you're still muted, <laughs> you know, as we're having discussions about all the little squares and we're all seeing each other in various states of uh, being engaged or being disengaged, doing all the things that we're doing in our own places. Um, from an average of about 80 participants uh, prior to the pandemic, and that would count who's in the building and also who's joining us online, uh, the attendance after the pandemic has averaged about 600 individuals per service, and that peaked uh, at the first Easter and last year's Christmas Eve services, and also in last November when President Vizi came on to give a sermon. And so in each of those cases, over 1,000 individuals were joining us live. Um, the service is captioned for the hearing impaired, and it's also translated into Community of Christ's three core languages, English, Spanish, and French. Um, uh, this is a picture here of Becky Savage, who is now a member of the Toronto congregation, even though she lives in Texas, uh, as she's preaching, and it's always captioned. The commitment, though, uh, to being able to do that is a lot of work. Nevertheless, it's extended participation far beyond Canada to the United States and every part of the world. And so between uh, the beginning of the pandemic and this month, um, disciples and seekers from 92 nations have engaged to Beyond the Walls service. And that engagement means they didn't just kind of watch it for a second as Facebook was showing it to them. It means they commented on it, they liked it, or they shared it. Um, major components of the service are regularly given in French and Spanish, including sermons. Um, services this year have included, and they're just, this is really exciting to me, the, the languages in Bambara, Chichua, Dutch, Drehu, English, French, Frisian, German, Haitian, Creole, Hakka, Hawaiian, Hungarian, Italian, Japanese, Korean, Kinyarwanda, Kuchi, Lingala, Malayalam, Mandarin, Maori, Norwegian, Polish, Portuguese, Punjabi, Romanian, Russian, Quechua, Shona, Spanish, Swahili, Swedish, Tahitian, Taiwanese, Hokkien, Tagalog, Tamil, Turkish, Xhosa, Ukrainian, and Yoruba. <laughs> <laughs> and for us, this is also um, this is also a, a missional issue because um, this is uh, promoting peace and justice and also abolishing poverty and ending suffering. And also because when we when we can't hear in all of these different languages, when we um, when we're forcing 
everything to be translated only into the imperial languages, we are all impoverished and we are also, um, we're also having, uh, uh, people are also being uh, unable to share their ideas. And so I'm very excited that we've been able to have this major expansion. Um, Another exciting thing for us is that after the United States and Canada, in terms of where the participants are coming from, the country with the third highest number week after week is French Polynesia. Um, and this is so neat because all of us who have been able to uh, go to a world conference, we know how the uh, French Polynesian delegation, they've been members since 1843, um, and they provide such an incredible part of community-based experience. And the fact that we get to experience that with them every Sunday has just been a real blessing during this time. Um, uh, in the first half of 2000, 275 individuals have served as either on-screen ministers or beyond the uh, scene, behind the scenes support. And so that's also just amazing to us, you know? So just the idea that we would have had um, uh, all of these different individuals who have been able to be part of this service in terms of either reading a scripture, giving a lesson, saying a prayer, giving a sermon, helping with the translation, helping with uh, all of the other kind of technical aspects. Um, in addition to those 275 individuals, another 125 individuals, there's some overlap here, have shared their voice with the virtual Beyond the Walls Choir, uh, where all of the voices are individually sung and then recorded, and then Leandro uh, blends them together to produce the final hymns. And of course, that's also been one of the amazing things to come out of the past year in terms of Beyond the Walls is, um, is, is this resource of the, of the hymn, hymn library that is able to be used in everybody else's online services. So in the past year and a half, the choir has recorded 127 hymns. It's a hard and difficult process, but Leandro is explaining it. If you wanna to go to his uh, workshop tonight, he's been going through a virtual choir instruction to explain all the behind the scenes tips about how this works. And so he blends then, like I say, Mike will play the original track. Leandro sings each of the four parts. He also gives directions to the choir members. Uh, he ships it all out to everybody. They listen to it. They learn their part. They, uh, they, they record their own voice doing it. And then Leandro blends it all together for the final track, which has become uh, the choir. All the singers have gotten so good. And the choir uh, has become so professional. It's just a wonderful thing. Um, we're also just amazed that uh, we have an increasing social media footprint as a result of this. So our YouTube channel has just crossed the 10,000 subscriber threshold. Uh, it only had 8,900 when I made the slide. It now has over 10,000. It's going up fast. And uh, it actually has, uh, I think, 1.2 million views now. Um, and almost all of the, 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 the most popular videos are including lectures, for example, that we have on Bible scholarship. And so as a result of this, um, it's actually becoming an amazing entry point for the church. So I get people who write me this last week from Europe and said, I have been looking for a church like this forever. This is amazing to me. Uh, and so anyway, so we're very pleased with uh, how that, that has also taken place. Um, as kind of everybody knows, you know, prior to the pandemic, the First Presidency had new guidelines allowing for the celebration of sacraments. So this has just been amazing for everybody because that, that anticipated all of this experience that we had. So we haven't been in the situation that so many churches have been where they haven't been able to figure out how to do communion this entire time, really, because, or that they're just the priest or someone is doing communion and everybody's just watching it but not participating. In this case, everybody's participating and it has been fantastic. We also have been able to extend that to confirmations. And so earlier this year in Beyond the Walls, Evan Charlie became the first person uh, in the Toronto congregation to have been um, confirmed a member without ever having set, set foot into a, a community of Christ building, without ever having met a community of Christ person in person. <laughs> and so uh, Brittany Mangelson, elder from Utah, was able to perform the confirmation with myself assisting and Evan being in his own home in Idaho. What a, a remarkable thing that we've been able to have that. And just on, on Friday last week, uh, two more people um, uh, just asked for confirmation last Friday. And so there's just been so many people who are, are finding Community of Christ and joining Community of Christ as a result of, uh, of this ministry. Um, 
how does it work in terms of everybody viewing the service? So people viewing the services actively participate in the comments on the live streams on, on, on Facebook and YouTube. So the last couple of weeks, um, people have been um, composing prayers together. Uh, what do we do? And, uh, you know, how do we, what do we do when we lose our way? What do we do when they've, and they've whole, a whole long prayer has emerged out of it. Um, people shared all of their favorite scriptures on, on Sunday. We also are trying to make the congregation be a fully realized congregation. It'll experience by doing meetings like this, like the one we're having in Zoom, but where where uh, it's not just a presenter like me, but like we're going to do when we, when the presentation here ends and we have comments and questions and we have that in two um two zoom meetings one on on thursday afternoon one on well, thursday evening one on sunday afternoon uh so that congregation members are having you know their um individual needs met through socializing and sharing concerns prayer concerns etc um it's been an amazingly inclusive and affirming ministry uh, uh affirming the worth of all persons and we have been able to have lessons that i think have helped people who have wanted to be allies in some of these complicated topics um, where we have brought on people who can able to share their experience and also teach us like for example Eliza Horning who had a two-part uh, piece lesson a few weeks ago um, that I found to be very 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 helpful um, so anyway I was uh, I think I'm gonna don't think we need to say too much more about the the generals but specifics I just wanted to have show some of our numbers like that I'm going to stop my screen share and I want to also then uh, make it more of a conversation uh, which is what our, uh, since this is not a lecture or a presentation uh, but it is sitting around the pine tree and so I would I would like to entertain any comments or questions about um, like, what do you have questions about in terms of what happens behind the scenes or how are we doing this or what any other thing about the process? Because that's, um, I just wanted to essentially kind of give you a little bit of the backlog and then and then we can get the ball rolling. I know that I have enjoyed doing the, uh, the singing with the choir and that, uh, those Tuesday night classes that we've been having with the Andrew, I'm, I'm going, how did he ever do over 30 of our entries on like one afternoon basically <laughs> to, to get it <laughs> done I, I he has he must have a tremendous ear like just to be able to do what he does amazing he's incredibly talented and he is also moved in this way from out of uh this is a real labor of love and passion so um um it's actually the, the more difficult part frankly, for me is not uh, is to get him to do anything but the choir. <laughs> because if he could, if he got his way, you'd just be doing choir all day long, all every day for the rest of his life. And that's because he loves it so much, you know, and so, uh, so it's really, really wonderful. But boy, Kathy, we so are so happy that you sing every week, uh, Dave, and I'm trying to think, I don't know the choir as well as Leander did, but everybody who's who joins in it is just there's it's like a congregation within a congregation and and the ministry that the choir provides not just for beyond the walls but the whole church every everywhere they're using uh, the beyond the walls choir hymns in in their worship services and so it's ma magnificent so i thank you susan has a question um susan i also want to say we had a question you had a question yesterday about uh starting hybrid services and so leander and i listened to that very much and we immediately talked that took that yesterday to art and Art brought that also to Robin Linkhart, who is the um, who is in charge of online ministries. And so they are putting together a task force to help congregations make informed decisions about the hybrid model of how they can do their own. And by by the way, I'm saying by hybrid, I'm saying not just like this, uh, like we're doing where we're on Zoom, not like beyond the walls, which is online only, but rather where people are coming to meet in person. And yet you also want to stream or or do something so that we're not abandoning our online members who have joined with us. And so um, what we're kind of doing, what they're going to do, um, uh, Brittany Mangelson and Robin Linkhart are going to be the leaders of this task force, but we're going to include a bunch of Canadians like Leandro and uh, maybe some of the people in, the, in some of the other congregations that already have these hybrids, and they're going to try to put together kind of both best practices lists, you know, with advice about how to do it, and then two, um, uh, answer questions for people. 
And so, and so that, so anyway, so that just started as of this morning, but, <laughs> but that was a response to a question you had yesterday. Go ahead. Wow, that was wonderful, because I was going to ask, um, and I have a person from Bridges Street that would probably like to be on that committee. Yeah. He does, he does our website, so he connects the website at church, and I connect Zoom, and he joins in Zoom, so I'm controlling on the big screen from my home. Yeah. And, and, and we're using a lot of your hymns that you've done which again thank you and I'm excited to meet tonight because my husband who hasn't been involved in our church and I have been working on this song <laughs> and I <laughs> he's down in the basement right now recording one more track so anyways yeah, um, <laughs> but, but you did answer my question John because I wanted to know if there's other ways than what Bridges Street is is doing for this hybrid because we have people who are elderly yes. and it's easier for them to to meet online. So, so thank you. So I can definitely say there's multiple different ways to do it, to approach the problem. It's a problem that we a lot of us are having. Um, we, one of the concerns and one of the reasons why um, having you brought it to our attention yesterday that we immediately wanted to kind of get some attention at headquarters about this is there's a lot of congregations thinking of this and a lot of them immediately think that the solution here is going to to go into uh get some buy, buy some five thousand dollar very expensive technical system or something like that and that may not be true and so rather than just having everybody start laying, thinking that they're going to throw money at the problem that they might end up um get locked into something that they don't need you know and so uh, there's a bunch of different ways to solve it we certainly like i say um, we we had had a hybrid before the lockdown, so we were we had a camera and an in person service for beyond the walls. That is probably not going to be true coming out of this. So one of the things for us that has happened is um, uh, the number of active members of Toronto congregation has now gone up to forty, um, and and so which is more like twice what it was more, more than twice what it was uh went before the lockdown and so as a result and that's all all adults you know and so um and so the uh since everybody's everywhere all around the world we can't we can't do it where we where we're going back we'll have in-person gatherings but it's not going to be the sunday gathering yes rod john have you considered providing a group of cds from your choir and selling them to those of us who would really like to have copies. We have, we have thought of that. Um, we have to figure it out. We hadn't known what medium people use anymore. So, you know, um, so CD is one of the things we question. We're like, how many people are using CD players? And so you, I got a vote here from you for CDs. Um, uh, we talked, we've actually talked to Harold House about it. Um, the, you know, some of them we can't because of copyright, you know, right? But some of them, uh, so anything that's been written, let's say after before, you know, like more recently than the 1920s, um, there, are, there are generally speaking copyright issues that would be made it hard to do, but we could do like all the older time favorite hymns and those kind of things. Um, uh, but yeah, I would love to be able to do that. We're also talking about, well, do people do like data sticks or what are they, you know, how do people use the, you know, MP, you know, I'm not sure, you know, what, in some cases, people can make it all for themselves too. I don't. I'm not really sure. We'll try to figure it out, Rod. Yes. <laughs> no. No eight track. No eight track. Yeah. We're gonna burn. Yeah. We're gonna get some vinyl recordings here too. You know, for uh, those are unpopular again. So yeah, I don't know. I, I listen to everything on computers, so I don't know how to <laughs> so how, how it would all work. Kathy, I was just wondering, uh, getting back to what Susan was was talking about there. Uh, if the uh, task force is going to look at different ways of hybrid. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. So there's yes. going to so be a absolutely. number of different ways. There's not going to, nobody, there, there's not, there's definitely not one solution to this. Like I say, um, pretty much what I would say is the way that Beyond the Walls works is not something that is, I, I, I don't think that's anything that we can really replicate for uh, a regular congregation because it's a little bit of a very complex technical system that is going into it. In fact, actually what we're, what we're uh, imagining in terms of um, Beyond the Walls is to can have it continue to be a partnership um, for congregations uh, that 
let's say are are not every week or not maybe ever um, going to use their resources to make Sunday services. And so one of the things that a congregation might decide to do is we have all kinds of things that um, are missional. You know, there are all kinds of different ways that we can be doing activism, that we can be um, doing things that are invitational. You know, we could we could have as our major thing that we're doing is um, uh, you know, like we're having whatever it is, a soup kitchen uh, event, which we all go to on Saturday. And then, and then on Sunday, what we're going to do is get together and like a cottage meeting, we watch beyond the walls together. And then after that, we will have a, um, a, a, sh a sharing meeting ourselves just locally in the, in the living room of a cottage or whatever anybody is, everybody's doing, because in some ways, um, um, fielding, a Sunday service can be one of the more difficult things. If we didn't, if if it hadn't been for the Beyond the Walls experience, if we hadn't merged our online congregation with our local congregation, we would be very hard pressed in Toronto to field um, a full service every week. You know, in terms of the sermon roster and all of those kind of things. You know, because we just have there's fewer people who 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 are you know we've lost people to. Uh, to dying, you know, and so therefore, you know, I mean, it was, that's what happens with the aging congregation, you know, and so um, anyway, so, so that's, what, that's an option, right? And, but so, so I think that there are a bunch of different ways, though, that there can be hybrid services. And so one of them, um, one of them is the way that I'm familiar with, which is that we had a camera in the chapel. We also had a monitor up front. Um, everybody is sitting facing the monitor and there's also the pulpit. And so we had the, um, the camera facing the pulpit. And then what happened would happen is that if we were going to get some, somebody from the Zoom service, let's say speaking, then that would, they would be on the monitor and everybody would be watching them, you know, and, and, uh, and then in that case, uh, the people online are just seeing what's on the monitor. <laughs> And then otherwise, it, we'd switch between that and we'd switch to uh, the camera view if, what, if somebody at the podium was speaking. And that's how we did it as a hybrid. I know that, for example, in um, uh, Edmonton, uh, they, I think they have a camera at the back of the chapel. And then just everybody, is gonna, everybody who's online is essentially just watching what's at the podium. And so they, don't ha they didn't have, in that case, an option for receiving ministry from people who are not in the Edmonton Chapel itself. And so I think that's probably the easiest technical solution that anybody can, can come by, uh, although they did go ahead and spend a whole bunch of money, I think, buying a lot of equipment. <laughs> so in other words, you can also do that like they did in um, Whitfield as a very expensive system anyway, which I think has the same kind of thing. So. Yes, Claire. Uh, your service is at 12 o'clock. Um, yes. And I know if you were to put it earlier in the morning, it would compete with all of the other surfaces in the various churches. Yes. However, however, there are some churches like like we do here. Every once in a while, we hook into the Ottawa service rather than have our own because it's at the same time. Yes. Um, have, uh, and, so, and so would you say that we'd be better off for you if we were to pull an hour earlier? In other words, if we were at 11 instead of 12? Well, no, I'm saying that for some congregation to met, uh, like at 10 or 11 or whatever, that if you were at that time, they could hook into you. However, right. yeah. you, however, for all the other congregations that meet at 10 or 11, they would miss your service. Uh, the way it is now, we go to church in the morning and then we come home and watch yours at 12 o'clock. Oh, well, we love that, that you do that. Thank you. <laughs> Sometimes we even go to church three times every, on Sunday. That's been one of the unexpected cool things about the pandemic is you can go to church, you know, all over the place uh, <laughs> multiple times every day. And you can actually see how um, different ministers are responding to the same theme and lectionary, right? You know, because it, it is pretty neat to, to have that experience. Yeah, so we have, we have contemplated... Um, if we are going to move the Beyond the Walls service to a particular time, what we would do, and it's complicated because, um, let's say, let's say if we were to go move it, let's say two hours later than it is right now, then everybody in the East and the Midwest theoretically could have their own church service at kind of like their normal time, and they could come home and watch Beyond the Walls if they wanted to. Um, it does, though, start to make it very late for England and Europe. And we get a lot of, we have a very good um, kind of alliance with the European and, and British church right now. Also, 
I would I would never have thought that this would be the problem, but it is apparently a problem for um, for French Polynesia, which we are, we do not want to mess up the situation we have going there because because um, right now I feel like it's so early. They want to, why would they want to wake up at six a.m. If we were to move to move it to eight, it would be good. But they all go to church at the crack of dawn over there. <laughs> so in other words, so so in other words, they wake up at six a.m. They love it and they they watch our church and then they go to their church at like eight thirty in the morning. And so, unfortunately, it does look like if we were to just go two hours later, we might, might conflict with all of the uh, congregations in Tahiti, and we don't want to do that. Um, so I don't know. So we have we we're right now we're kind of staying where we are and just maybe figuring it out from there. I'm not sure. Well, the good thing is that they are being recorded. So yes. therefore, if everybody wants to see them, e either either the following week or later on, they can still see the recording, and that's still good. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's always an option too for everybody. And so I, I do think, and um, and we hope to actually, one of the other things we hope to do as resource for other congregations is um, start to divide out uh, the segments and post them as resources, as videos. So for example, um, by, uh, by theme maybe even. And so let's say if you are, ha you just wanna have a recording of a sermon for, you know, in other words, you've got the whole rest of your service, but you wanna play a sermon like you might off of the church's DVD. You could also play uh, one from the sermon library, for example, or a prayer for peace library or whatever, because we would have just taken all of the past ones that we have. And if you like one of them, you can use them for that week for integrated into your service. Good. Yes, yeah, Susan again. Oh, and then, yeah. And, then look. And, and I also like what you said, and I hadn't thought about that, particularly with smaller congregations, if two would come together periodically for one service. And I mean, that you could be in your own congregation and you share. So maybe only one person needs to do the sermon and one would do the prayer for peace. So, so that's another um, benefit of having in-person and a hybrid where you can combine a couple of congregations or three or four. Right, and right, right, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you can have a, um, a real create strategic partnership, right? And so, um, and so that would be a fantastic thing to do if you were on a hybrid. I mean, we have, we have very explicitly um, have a strategic partnership in Toronto with the Calgary congregation. And so um, they have built their whole new facility in part, um, you know, uh, I've been, in, I've, I've been talking to them forever, right? And so we, I've flown out to Calgary a, a bunch of bunch of times and we, we consulted with them on their building their new facility on all the equipment they're buying. We want them to have the exact same system that we have so that um, they can actually be the, the transmission place. So in other words, if, if our live streaming went down, it could just shift over to Calgary and or um, some of the beyond the walls is good actually when, if I'm traveling around in Europe and we're going to do a thing live from outside Westminster Abbey or something like that, then Calgary could be the place where the, the service is actually being streamed and then it could be in the, and, and so on. And so, um, and so they're definitely, we kind of identified them as a strategic partner. That congregation was willing to step up and do that. And, uh, and so we're very excited for that. And you could do that with any other group congregation could pick a, you know, it's like uh, your sister congregation, like you're having a sister city, you know, and so, and like you say, then you go back and forth because um, we had this wonderful, with the hybrid services, it was wonderful. Our, our congregation's life changed when Becky Savage, um, who had been part of our online congregation right from the start, because she um, isn't able to enter um, because of, of uh, health conditions, she's not able to enter community of Christ buildings because of the mold that she's allergic to. And so, and so as a result of that, she hadn't been able to have communion. <laughs> she hadn't been able to, you know, here's this amazing speaker, hadn't been able to provide ministry in that way, right? And so when she was able to start doing that, um, it changed everything for us because of her at coming to be part of our sermon roster, you know? And so that happened about six months before, or eight months before the pandemic. And so that was, a, that was another example of a hybrid, Susan, where, where um, it's not just about... Uh, you know, hybrid where people are still able to watch uh, um, from what's going on in the church, but it's also the people in the church can watch, you know, maybe uh, what's going on in the other places if you can get it to work that way. So, and Lou, you had. Go ahead. Yeah, actually, uh, I'll do two things. I'll respond a little bit to Susan's. The other, the other kind of 
sort of hybrid, uh, I would suggest is is kind of like as, as Uncle Claire mentioned, what happened between New Liskard and and Ottawa. The New Liskard uh, crew, uh, they they simply didn't have have enough geekness to host all this stuff, you know, yeah. and to do the AV and the and the hymns and everything else. <clears throat> they had they had people who were very good at doing Zoom and became even better. And so there's different levels. You don't have to have the 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 uh, the, the beyond the walls level of of technical stuff in order to form a partnership. Yeah. And so it's been very easy for Ottawa. We have four or five people, you know, who could who could host the Zoom and and do the AV stuff and everything else. And and so it was great, you know. And often on Sundays we had had more people from the list group that were actually part of our services than than before. And I I see no reason why that absolutely can't continue is to take advantage of the designated geeks wherever they are. And, <laughs> you know. Um, so the other thing that's kind of kind of related to that is I would love as part of the, the World Church initiative is to have a sermon roster of people, especially at the world church level, who are willing to do sermons. That's been one of the biggest blessings for us is being able to suddenly, you know, it's kind of like going to reunion where you get to hear some other some other voices instead of just listening to, to the same four or five people all the time. Right, right. And, and we had the unique advantage in Ottawa because we had people like Ken Barrows who knew all the people in Western Canada and, and everywhere else. I knew people from seminary and 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 other places right. where I could make personal contacts and ask, you know, Dave Wilson preached one day. Uh, uh, Roy and Steve Otteson have been there. Dale Ward's doing one for us. Uh, uh, but it would be great for congregations to have a roster of people that they could ask. Yeah. Well, that's something that. Um... I guess that's outside of what um, what Robin's thinking of, <laughs> you know, in terms of just because she's talking about marshalling, uh, uh, like you say, all of the ge local geeks everywhere. Whereas this would also be a a, a, a communications thing, which I think, um, to, to even what you're saying in general, um, I, I felt for a whole long time that that the he church headquarters really ought, ought to be um, thinking of itself in much more in terms of being a content provider. Uh, because uh, you know we're in a lot of ways when we got rid of of the of the theological need for hierarchy and so and and wanting to have like a you know like this entire kind of regimented system of gradiented ranks and all this kind of thing and instead we've turned our hierarchy on the side and said we're all you know you know we're uh, we're all the same in that way and we're and it's a servanthood priesthood anyway and that kind of it that it that in some ways we we sort of have a a strange we're left with a kind of a strange headquarters system for a congregation, you know, like a, a hybrid, we're a hybrid between a congregational based, uh, a, a, a regional um, mission center and then a, and a, high, and a center place. But anyway, the, the, uh, the hierarchy or whatever the headquarters, I think sh what they should be doing is providing lots of content for all of us so that, uh, and, and one way you could do that is by open sourcing it, which is to say, they are identifying speakers and 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 maybe like you saying having a way to connect local congregations with effective speakers. The way we've done it in Beyond the Walls is um, is is a little bit unique. And so, um, I mean, in some cases we have had amazing speakers who have written an email and said. Like like Danny Belrose, I love what you're doing. I want to be on the service. <laughs> so and so we really appreciated that email when I got that. That was really important right at the beginning because we were trying to reinvent, you know, doing, trying to get gear up and do all these things. And so have, having resource like that has been uh, has been amazing. But the general way um, of how uh, Beyond the Walls works, as opposed to like me going around in the roll decks of who I think are all of the stars around the church and trying to uh, invite them on, what we do is we we check in who is engaged in the service 
And so when people are commenting in the stream week after week and they're set and they're saying, oh, this was wonderful, this was really moving, or thank you very much for being here, and all those kind of things that they're, they're saying, we, uh, we pay attention to that. When we, people who are sharing up about that on their own Facebook page or, or people who, I mean, frankly, people who are making contributions, they pay tithing. In other words, there's things that are showing uh, that they are being, uh, that they support this ministry. So then what we do is we, we, we um, invite that person to come on and to read a scripture. And so they might be um, somebody who, you know, because there's different uh, levels of comfort that you have with being in a streaming circumstances, right? And so there might be somebody who's an amazing um, pastor who can preach a great sermon and everything like that from the pulpit, but then they go, oh my goodness, there's a thousand people watching or whatever it is, and then they really, you know, freak out because of the technology. But whoever, whatever level the person has been at, a young person in some cases, so they, they start off with a scripture reading and we see how that goes. Uh, we also have our after chat, so we kind of get to know them. Uh, from there, we invite people to give a prayer or to a lesson. Uh, and from giving a lesson, you know, and so if they're given the peace lesson, which is kind of a mini sermon, um, we have a sense of them. And so then we are able to invite the people on to do a sermon. And so what I'm really excited about in this past, uh, uh, well, even coming up to this Sunday, we've had, um, uh, I think a string of four or five women who had never given sermons before in Beyond the Walls, but who have gone that very same path, right? And so we had um, uh, uh, Zilphia Martin III, and she just did an amazing sermon. And she wouldn't have been on any roster because <laughs> because she yeah. she hadn't done that before. We had uh, Noel Gafka, you know, you know who who was who was able to do that. We're having this week Lily Mao from uh, from Tahiti who's come on and given our peace lessons. Next week after that, we're having uh, Vicki Thatcher, who uh, has given one sermon from us before, but you know, in other words, had the same exact developed disciples to serve to serve a path that we always do with Beyond the Walls. So I'm really excited about how we kind of have a internal um, procedure of how uh, we kind of are training people <clears throat> to give that kind of ministry too, without, um, anyway, without that. Yeah, but but it's a little bit of chicken and egg. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. you you have that selection to choose from because you have That's all right. of those people who are there. That's I'm right. thinking about a small congregation that yes. has, you know, 14 people. That's right. And and how how do they do that? And yes. the image that came to my mind was watching your thing yesterday talking about the all voices thing. Yeah. That's what I'd love to have is that screen with a bunch of faces so I could say I'm the planner. I I'm looking out <laughs> well, I'm looking out next April, you know, who's available and have that screen come up and be able to then invite somebody. And and you know, I just think that would be amazing. And I think the connections that it would begin to draw between uh people and in, in congregations in different places, especially if 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 their congregation then join with our congregation, you know, I think that would be amazing. Yeah. And uh, and so that's anything that could happen to facilitate that, I think would be a real benefit. Then you're not relying on just people who are nosy and know everybody. <laughs> you know, that that's kind of what we did. It's just because because <laughs> I had a whole bunch of contacts. Good point. Thank you. And uh, Susan, you add another. Could you also include, um, and I like that you said World Church could be the contact people. Um, I just found out that Daily Bread for the month of August is having a spiritual discernment series. And I love our podcasts, which are all like Zion Podcasts, which is audio. Yep. But I would think it would be amazing if maybe not. Katie, I know she's busy, but someone that we could, through Zoom, see that. Um, so it's not just sermons that we could be sharing, but um, different things. So maybe World Church needs to think, think about that, um, whether it's spiritual formation or whether it's our adult uh, church class each Sunday. That would be wonderful if we could all uh, zoom <laughs> with that. I, I 
totally agree. Um, and I'm not, but I just want to say on this, I'm, I'm not world church in that sense, you know? And, um, and so I'm, I, I'm actually, so one of the things I do in a way is by, um, you know, by saying, look, this is what a congregation, you know, is, was able to do. So, you know, we're able as a congregation to um, have, you know, three times the number of subscribers to our YouTube channel as you do as an entire denomination that we have, um, you know, three times the number of views of our contents and media that as, as, as the church has been able to have as an entire denomination. <laughs> and, and I, and so we shouldn't be in a place where one congregation is, is out um, producing, you know, in terms of uh, this kind of content. So I agree with you, there needs to, the church, the world church needs to have in my view too, like, like you're saying, I mean, I'm not in charge of it, but anyway, I think that they should be producing these, um, this kind of videos and these kind of resources, uh, even if they don't have to, they don't have to all do it from headquarters, but even just using headquarters to, uh, to let's say produce good stuff, you know, get, you know, get people to re record different things and then put it onto the, onto their YouTube channel and onto, so that everybody has access to all of these things, not just sermons, but all of the different things that they want to model. And so, um, so all we can kind of do is, is uh, kind of say, hey, look, you could do with this, <laughs> you know, because we're doing it and we're just a congregation um, and, and it's being used. I mean, I mean, nobody knew, I mean, it, I'm sure nobody at headquarters knew how needed um, the hymn resource was until the Beyond the Walls Choir was there. But now that it's there, um, it's pretty obvious how needed it was, right? And so in the same way, um, a, a resource like you're talking about, Susan, to have, um, I probably couldn't be anything more important than Katie. I know how busy she is too, but then if she were to model, let's say, a series of 20 of these, and they were, in the, and they were a whole module that's on the on the church's YouTube page, so that you could plug a, a five minute spiritual practice or 10 minute or whatever long of the series would be into your service. Um, I've also said this a thousand times from back when I was um nowadays I don't have to write all the content for the for the Toronto service so so a um uh two years ago I was we got to a place really where I was writing the peace lesson the you know I would get a prayer for peace off the website I was writing the disciples generous response the disciples generous response prayer the um the the presider script the invocation often so in other words you know so that was where i was that was kind of like i did we had a lot of people who could do a sermon but we didn't have a lot of the whole rest of it and so so um and so i was saying at the time being a worship planner that was called upon every week to write a new dgr i was like telling to the bishops bishops write 52 dgr lessons <laughs> you know you know and 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 just write those and and, and that would actually and, and that way you could actually get people to to be interested in the things that you want them to donate to or whatever, because they, because everybody in a worship service and everybody's congregation needs a needs something to say for the DGR that week, and uh, and they don't have the resource for it anyway. So so you're in the, in, in the sense you guys are all preaching to me as the choir here, which is I think the kind that the world church needs to make content. That's what I do too every day. Yes, Kathy. <laughs> uh, just to, to promo tomorrow morning. Uh, yeah. If you want to talk about this, uh, we have <laughs> Daniel Harmon, who is, uh, I'm reading this, Daniel is leading the emergence of a new spirituality and community center at the temple. Uh, this sounds like a resource that we need to get our, our voice into, doesn't it? Absolutely. It, right? It, so that how, how crazy is it? Okay, uh, we have, uh, this is another, I'm just going to keep on with, the, we shouldn't keep on going down this path, but I mean, how crazy is it? We have this amazing, um, there's, there is no better more, more amazing piece of infrastructure than the temple right and and yet and yet so i really appreciated like like a month or two ago when when steve easy gave a kind of a they gave a nicely produced video and they're actually using the temple they got a drone flying above it and he's kind of walking out into the the world plaza and things like that why every single day are we not getting a prayer for peace from the temple that is that where they slot in they, they can slot in the person's um you know, like the prayer and the and ever less or whatever they're going to do, but then the rest of it has got to be could have all of these shots from all around in the temple and the temple because the temple is so beautiful and you know instead of um, I don't know I mean in other words we have this amazing infrastructure <laughs> you know and why and why are, and and why aren't we why aren't why aren't we using that to inspire us you know by just filming it 
we have access tomorrow and Thursday <laughs> to someone who is going to be, but you got to turn up and get your voice heard. Yeah, excellent. On Thursday, right. or Wednesday and Thursday with Daniel Harmon. And oh, that, that's good. at the 10 o'clock talk. Fantastic. <laughs> And, and let's not forget Daniel is married to our own Emily Rose, right? So. Oh, and Emily right. Rose, love Emily, yeah. Are there other questions about, I don't know, our processes and beyond the walls or? <laughs> yeah, Louis, Louise. I really enjoy your services. I really enjoy how people are from all over the world connected. Thank you. I yeah. really, really enjoy that. Oh, well, thank you so very much. I really enjoy that too. <laughs> that, that has been that has been one of the um, the amazing pleasures, uh, like what I kind of call like the world conference experience that we kind of get to have every week because we're we're experiencing people from all over the church, all over the world. And I love the way that you're really concentrating on developing disciples to serve. And <laughs> and you. in our congregations for years, you know, it has tended to be one person who kind of does everything yeah. um, but what we need to do is let that go yes Let's let that go and uh and give other people a chance to use their talents and i think it's what, what i'm seeing john is uh is in that direction i love it yeah and and one of the other things that we find when we do that is that that's also um like a path into into commitment into identity with the church into uh, a personal calling for, of, of mission because a person understands how uh, vital their talents are and how needed they are. Um, and so, like I say, this has been what for us an amazing path to uh, as as people uh, who come to us as investigators, essentially people who are who just find us uh, and, and then they go on all along the path with us to to mem to full membership and um and we really didn't have a lot of experience with you know getting a lot of new members you know for a while in the congregation and so um uh some of the some of the um kind of the amazing success stories for us have been um well specifically so latter-day seekers so people who are having faith transitions out of the mormon church who are liking what they're able to see when they come to uh, community of Christ service beyond the wall service that they're able to experience. Um, but then the second biggest group of the people actually are people who are old RLDS members who have not had any activity with the church for whatever reason, um, you know, and they might, they, they left, I mean, there several people, for example, who left in the 80s uh, and they've been on their own path. Uh, the church has been on its own path. They have now come to a place where the thing that they left over there, no, that's no longer their thing, you know, that they're upset about. In fact, they, they realized that maybe they were wrong about that kind of, about women's ordination and things like that. You know, I don't know. And, and, and then have asked to have their membership reinstated and are now fully, you know, active members of, and transferred their membership to the Toronto congregation. And so they're fully active members of the congregation. And then finally, um, and the, one of the more complicated ones are people who, um, were raised in some other Christian tradition uh, who have now been able to see a, you know, a, us modeling a, a non um, dogmatic church, you know, a, a church that is open to um, understand, looking for meaning and understanding, uh, you know, the uh, sacred story uh, as a way to, for us to do discernment now, as opposed to just a rule book or whatever that they, that they get hit over the head with kind of thing. Uh, and so, and so, those are sort of like the the, th the three kind of seekers that, as we are working, um, we don't see this as much on the in the beyond the walls because we are talking to the entire global congregation. But there's also the um, the interior congregation that is, in, in a way, uh, called to support that ministry. And that interior congregation has. Uh, is, has grown so, so much that it's actually really remarkable because we were in a really, um, uh, we were, you know, graying and in a really kind of dire circumstances in terms of how many, um, how many members that we have and, and, and who are able to do things every week after week, you know. Yeah, Susan. I'll just say one more and then I'll, I'll be quiet, yeah. but I just wanted to say 
how it encourages me because when I see things live and unpolished and I see mistakes get made and yeah um that it's like oh yeah well I guess I could do that as well because <laughs> it doesn't have to be perfect so i and i'm not saying john your services i'm just saying well, no i'm, on, 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 yeah, on, two days ago i um uh, i walked onto the screen and my my microphone had its mute on and so i'm like <laughs> you know so so that that you know I mean, it, it happens to everybody you know so <laughs> i have to figure that out so i mean that's what i always tell people people are often sometimes nervous especially when they're on for the first time and and they sometimes they think oh i really i really messed up or i really i'm like no <laughs> you know i mean really for one thing every we're all human and we're all providing the industry and and even if we even if we have a moment like that you know we recover from that moment and like like you say it makes the whole thing human it may, that's one of the reasons why it is live that the, the fact that it's live is what um i think is re what really allows the spirit to um be felt everywhere by everyone you can get a lot out of the recording there's nothing i'm not I'm anything wrong with it but i think the fact that it is um uh there's a difference between something that is live than when we're doing a pre-recorded yes it definitely gives you a giggle when you know that leandro is desperately searching for the right slide when danny's gone off on a tangent <laughs> <laughs> It makes everybody giggle except me. I gotta. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I have to respond to that. I, I've, been, I, I've been reasonably reasonably uh, quiet today because I've never I've never learned anything from hearing myself talk. <laughs> so I was given an exercise in listening. But you're right, uh, Lou. Um, that's why I was fired. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would send it. I would send it a script, and then, oh, some other ideas come, and then I send it another script. <laughs> I drive them. I, I've driven them nuts. Um, but on the other hand, this is just a personal note, and I had not intended to talk today. But um, one of the things that I, that personally, I've discovered uh, through the pandemic is I've come out of retirement. <laughs> Uh, I'm not saying the phone is ringing off the hook, but I've had opportunity to bring ministry in, in many ways that, that wouldn't have the opportunity to do so, and, and particularly through, through Toronto. It's been wonderful, and I, I think I've, I've praised the Toronto services ever since I stumbled onto them, and they're wonderful. They're just terrific. They're first class, and John and uh, Leandro need to be lifted up and appraised for that. I know there's a lot of people involved, John, but you guys do a super job now i can go back to being quiet thanks lou <laughs> danny it has been such a privilege to have you every time you are on and you have not been fired <laughs> we, we, we look forward to many more sermons from you and uh the translators will put up with it <laughs> so <laughs> i'm just referring to local <laughs> <laughs> mary you were gonna say Okay, I've watched this over the last couple of years, and you know I've been an active um, in the background, watching, yes. and listening. Um, I just, I, I'm almost scared. It's so wonderful. I'm almost afraid. And when COVID was going, I said to Leandro, "For heaven's sake, take care of yourself." And John and Michael, I don't know what we would do without them. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, my prayers are always for you guys because the work that you do, it, it's just, it blows my mind. It's, it's marvelous and it has blessed my life and it must have blessed thousands of others. Thank you so much. Oh, Mary, thank you so much. And thank you for your prayers and for all of your support. You've been with us before the pandemic, right? And and so anyway, so you've been there anyway. So I, we really appreciate that. And I appreciate, and I'll, I'll say that, I'll carry that, convey that message to Leandro and to Mike. Thank you. Um, um, but yeah, well, I'll, I'll just say we have taken and we've tried to also model um, a very uh, a strong or safe response to the pandemic. And so uh, we're still we're still actually taking lots and lots of precautions uh, and 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 are not. Uh, anyway, we, we, we want we want to try to. I, I mean, so for I'm not going to, you know, so like in, we had some ministers in Canada who uh, uh, telling everybody that they can't go on trips and things like that, and they and they head off to the Caribbean for for <laughs> you know for uh, you know for the holidays or whatever. And and we kind of have felt like, look, we 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 have a um, 
we should be cautious for our own selves, but we also have um, uh, the people who we're providing ministry to in many cases are in higher risk groups, you know, and or especially before and some, of the, some of the new variants, everybody's pretty exposed. But anyway, uh, and so we should be modeling this and, a, and a modeling and, and reminding people of it. And so I think we've done a lot of, of keeping that message through the whole time without uh, without doing fear mongering or something like that, just trying to, you know, keep, keep, keep people hopeful. Uh, but then also, for example, talking about all of the different um, things that have come through this. So we've had a lot of services focused on uh, mental health effects of, of that we've all been facing, for example, uh, from being isolated and, and uh, you know, and, and so anyway, so I, I but we, we've been doing our best to, um, to also stay very safe. Danny. Uh, you've weakened, you've weakened a problem. Uh, yeah, I want to, I want to go back to, to the comment that you made about, you know, little foul ups that happen and, and the fact that it's real. Yeah, and you know we know that there are large mega churches, even churches here in Kansas City, Independence, where uh, they can put on a pretty slick service. They've got all kinds of people who have, you know, great equipment and so forth. That it comes across, and I don't mean to be critical. It comes across smooth and slick. Yeah, but not all. And I don't. And this isn't a criticism, but not always authentic. If, yes. if you find it, yeah. And I, I think that's the thing that I that really draws me. Uh, to uh, beyond the walls because it's authentic. And if something happens, I mean, I remember one, one occasion when I started a, a sermon and my I had muted myself and went yeah. on for uh, 35 minutes muted. No. <laughs> <laughs> Someone, I think Leandro uh, alerted me to the fact that I was muted and it was sad because the, what I had said before was worth everything that I said afterwards. Yeah, <laughs> before. yeah. But but no, I'm I'm being facetious. But the other thing is that it is authentic. It's real, and yeah. there is a sense of of the Holy Spirit being present, not just boxed and packaged. Is that I'll I'll end with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I think that's yeah. Yeah. Well, and so I don't think that you know. Again, I think that that also happens uh, intentionally, right? And so I think that uh, you know that doesn't just isn't spontaneous, and, and it is spontaneous, but it does also. Um, but it's also uh, by by how allowing the ministers on the one hand to achieve a certain degree of comfort by, for example, every single service, um, you know, there's been a lot of talk ahead of time. There's a there's a Facebook discussion group among the ministers for the whole preceding week. There is a uh, there is the Saturday rehearsal where everybody is made to feel as comfortable as they can with the technology. There is the ministers meeting that begins a half an hour early. So that again, we've gone through the technology so that we once again, everybody is, is feeling confident about that. But then also we have the the chaplain of the ministers meeting who is helping us uh, as ministers, you know, um, be prepared to invite the Spirit's presence or to recognize the Spirit's presence among us. And so I think that, that is, that's really been a major ingredient for allowing that to all happen, you know. And so I don't know what they do. I mean, I have never been, I mean, I don't know what they, if they're not doing that in a mega church, maybe they, they, maybe they are also doing all of those kinds of things. But, um, but yeah, I know how authentic all of the people who are engaging in ministry and beyond the walls are because of just, that's how, um, that's essentially the ingredient we're inviting people for is this authenticity. And so we're all real people. This is a church family. Um, there's nothing I love more than my community of Christ family, both locally through beyond the walls and all around the world. I mean, this is just, like I said, what I've committed my life to and, and, and will for her. That's what I'm, this is, this is what I'm called to. So I'm so excited about it. Anne. I remember the years when uh, we used to put an ad in the paper on the weekend and it would say who was going to preach. Um, and people would read the paper, and if they didn't particularly like the person who was going to preach, they wouldn't come to church. Well, so that's why we never advertise when Danny's going <laughs> to. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 learned our, we learned our lesson back then. Lots, lots. <laughs> um, but then we stopped putting who was going to preach and more people would come because okay. they were curious. Um, so, and then we got in the, some of our congregations that we were shy to invite people mm. to come to the service because 
were not experienced. A lot of us um, were not experienced in preaching, uh, weren't sure what the message would be or how much integrity there would be in the service. Um, so this transformation to Beyond the Walls has um, been so easy to invite people to mm. and, uh, and wanting to um, spread the word that um, uh, there is something worth watching on a Sunday at 12 o'clock. And um, we had a young man that we were bringing to, uh, to Grand Valley and he was quite enjoying it. He liked the community and so forth. Um, and since the lockdown, he has continued to watch Beyond the Walls and, uh, and really feels um, blessed um, by the, the, the integrity of the, of the service. So, so I just wanted to, I, I was just sitting here thinking of years ago, how, how things have changed since then and how we, can't, we have a message to bring to the world and to each of us. That, um, that is very important. Um, and in the times that we're living in right now, we need something that's going to ground us and give us a foundation to build on. So uh, thank you, John and, and Mike and, and uh, Leandro. Uh, honestly, I, I think of you as the, the three Nephites <laughs> because you're also multi-gifted to bring this ministry. Um, that we could never have even predicted um, uh, uh, Leandro with his languages and with the choir and, and Mike, just beautiful music that blesses yep. us all every Sunday. And so um, my thanks to you. Well, thank you. Yeah. And I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad that that's the case that, um, you, because, in, you know, I agree. I, I totally feel with what you're saying is because as a, um, do as a 70 who wants to do uh, outreach all the time. And so I was definitely part of the people who um, helped formulate the church's uh, Restoration Heritage Seeker, the Rata Day Seeker um, program and things like that. And one of the issues kind of was, as I'm out talking to post, let's say post-Mormons and faith crisis mm -hmm. on the front lines, you know, it was always a little bit but if I'm sending them to some local congregation, you know, what are they going to get? I don't know. You know what I mean? And so there is a little bit of a, of not always certain what the, let's say what the product you're going to get to is. Um, and so I do think that there, that has been a, a, a luxury we've been able to have in a way uh, and I've been able to have as a pastor in beyond the walls is uh, because we have been able to access uh, either both by developing disciples to serve and also by having um, being able to call ministers out of retirement who are, are very gifted um, and, and having that. And, and also because of the commitment to uh, translate everything, um, as a result of that, I get all the text early uh, because the people have to give it to me because it's got to go through translation. And so I'm able to work with everybody um, if there is an issue, right? And so you, you're not... Um, and, and, and great issues can happen for very experienced ministers. I have a very experienced minister who... Um, wanted to say something and there's a, let's say a bit of nuance that wasn't happening there. Or, um, you know, like a lot of times, let's say a guy, you know, white male minister may not remember when it was giving a list of, let's say seven examples, might forget to include women, you know, in the list or whatever, because, you know, that's the guy thing to do. That's what privilege is, right? And so anyway, so as we are, as we kind of like make, can make those kind of suggestions, um, that is another way that we're able to make sure that the the end product is is going to always be able to uh, be something that you can bring somebody to in terms of the invitation because we know, we kind of know what's going to happen with that. So, so we're very pleased that we have that luxury. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah, Claire. With all of the statistics that you keep, do you have any indication as to whether any young families and young people? Um, are connecting with uh, Beyond the Walls? So there are some. So I'm gonna tell you our, we're, our main demographic uh, is not, uh, let's say parents with young kids because we aren't really providing a lot of children's programming. We have done, uh, we do have some children and younger people who have been on the service. We're gonna have uh, Tiona again this sun Sunday, for example, uh, Tiona Horning. But, um, but the reality is, is that frankly, the, uh, there's two different kinds of programming. 
And so one of the things that uh, we are considering doing, especially as the um, alliance with Calgary uh, starts to take off, they're done with their building now, they're going to maybe start to be able to do some of these other things other than just worrying about building their building, etc. Um, if one of the things that a megachurch does is it has more than one service. So there's the service that um, the, the kind of stalwart older members, you know, have, you know, enjoy, and that's kind of what we already do with Beyond the Walls, but maybe there's a service that is specifically focused on, let's say, parents uh, and, and their younger and teenage kids, let's say. And so, it, so if we were to start a second service, we probably would be looking at, at something like that. Um, and so, and so what I'd say right now is, yeah, there are some kids definitely who are like our, like Asenia's, uh, uh, little boy in in El Salvador who dances to every Beyond the Walls hymn and all of these things, you know, so we do have some indication that we do have uh, the Donald's kids, you know, I mean, there are, there are a bunch of um, core active kid members, but I would say that that isn't our focus. So in terms of the, or it isn't our major group. And so if you did, um, so we, in terms of the, the breakdown, the kind of breakdown you have, it, you can only get what the, um, let's say the account that's watching. So if there's a whole family watching, in the in the room, Facebook doesn't know that there's a whole family in there. They just know the mom's login or whatever, right? right. Uh, and so, get, getting getting from the data from that, what I can tell you is that our um, you know blowing everybody out of the water as a demographic group watching beyond the walls are women sixty five and older. Uh, and so, women sixty five and older is like that is like the the, the you're our people. <laughs> You know, and so, and you beat out men 65 and older by a whole bunch, you know, because maybe the men 65 and older need the women to log them on to the Facebook. But anyway, but our, you know, but, but so I would, I would say that that's kind of, you know, where we are, where the, the biggest demographics are, where we're at is it, trending older, just like the whole church. Um, but, uh, you know, anyway, <laughs> it's not the only, this is not the only, um, uh, that's kind of what we had to deal with in a, in a certain way that because this is not a um, this is not a programming that was created from scratch this is a congregation so we are a 130 year old congregation and we were building from an existing members one of our problems um, you know when the core membership you know if, in, when I you know when I joined the Toronto congregation the median age was 79 you know, and that was 10 years ago. So the, you know, the, you know, or more than, you know, so the, the, um, so the median age of our heritage members, you know, the, the people who were active before I became a member of the congregation, you know, is well, you know, you know, it's, it's, it's not necessarily, it's not necessarily gone up to 80 because of people have died. Uh, but in any event, it's, it's well in the 80s, right? And so, and so in that sense, it's actually very hard for people in their 80s to, uh, connect with little kids all the time because no matter how much they love them, they they're running around and they're they're making too much noise and all this kind of thing. And so there is have to be, um, you know, like I've always said right from the beginning in Toronto congregation, I'm not actually after a bunch of kids because um, at the there's a new reality of this. I'll explain why I'm not after the kids later. But what I actually was after is some good. I just need a couple really strong. 55 year olds, <laughs> you know what I mean? I need a, I need a, I need a new couple who's 65, you know, because I need, I need people in, the, I mean, I need people in these kind of age ranges, right? You know, fifties and forties or whatever, because those are people who are going to be able to connect with my 80 year olds, you know what I mean? And then I'm going to be able, and we're able to uh, pass things along. What I'm going to say about the kids situation is that we, we are in a, we haven't gone through a transition in society in my view. So in the past, um, it's not always, it's not going to always be the case because many of you, maybe have grandkids who are uh, where you where your kids and grandkids and great grandkids even they're all fully active in the church just like you and if so that's wonderful that that has happened but in a lot of cases what has happened is that uh, we are not just inheriting our um, our tribe as a, a religion anymore because there because the society is is substantially more individualistic so each individual person is going to opt in or choose to opt in we um, we have one you know active uh, you know uh, little girl in um, Toronto congregation who was born the day that we had our first service in the church in, in Toronto Center Place. Um, she um, there's no, no she's very active right now as a six year old. Um, there's no particular reason why I, I would ever come to believe that as a 24 year old that she'll be any more active in Community of Christ than let's say in any other handful of other. Um, 
people that age, she has to choose to join it when she's an adult, frankly, because that's really kind of where we're at. And so in that sense, um, if we continuously put all of our eggs into the, these, this, these kids are going to be our, our last hope basket, um, we're going to keep having the results that we've had. I'm not saying we ignore the kids or anything like that, but we do have to focus on, uh, we do have to have some focus on, on uh, converting adults uh, because that's the new reality. People have to opt in. That was what it was in the first generation of the church. Everybody's a convert. Um, and I think that that's the way things are going to be going forward is you have to even convert the kids too. So in other words, when our kids do get to be in their 20s, we have to convert them at that point because they have to want to opt into something. They're not just going to default be in it, you know? And so, and so in that sense, um, um, our focus hasn't been on kids programming because of that perceived reality that's a hard truth nobody ever wants to hear anybody say that <laughs> so I, i've mentioned it to you i've said it to you <laughs> but anyway i uh, but it, that is kind of where my focus is and so actually um i'm really overjoyed when i as i've been recently converting um people in their 40s <laughs> because it's just it's so amazing to have some more people in their 40s who are able to um you know help out with a lot of different work you know when um when when i became pastor there were but there was a little bit of a backlog of baptizing because nobody felt adic nobody felt you know are the people we had in priesthood no longer wanted to actually raise people back up out of the water because again if, if people got older you know and we need we needed some more 40 year olds you know so that's all yes Doreen. we thoroughly enjoy the beyond the walls and we watch it every sunday leandro is always saying to click like yes. i click like and i lose everything is there okay. a trick to this? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I guess I would, yeah, I'm sure there is, <laughs> you know, but I don't know what the trick might be because I don't even know it. What are you watching it on? Zoom. No, no, not Zoom. Um, just um, through your um, website. Like on a tablet, on a computer? On a computer, yeah. On a computer, and it's a uh, PC computer as opposed to a Mac Macintosh? <laughs> I don't know. Well, I'm, so one of those, uh, I'm one of those over 80 people. <laughs> <laughs> well, Doreen, that's why I say I'm not really sure there is a trick to it, but there's actually 20 different tricks depending on what you're actually doing. So I don't I don't know what you know. So you're watching it through Facebook on some computer. I'm just watching it on, uh, you know, um, uh, on my on my computer. YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. YouTube on uh, through YouTube. No, no live, you know, yes, on, it's on YouTube. That's how we connected you. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so I guess it depends on where you click like in that sense. So probably what's happening is um, there's more than one place on the screen to click like. And if you click like in, in like the wrong place, you know, or if you're clicking in the wrong place, it'll take you off of the video. Yeah. That's so what's there's, happening. Yeah. Yeah. And so there's so like, because what, because everything in a website is like a link and it's all trying to get you to go to its thing and never wants you to i mean you know the people we want you to stay on our thing but everybody else wants you to click on their thing and then that'll take you away from our thing and so it's just a matter of figuring out um there's there's going to be a like place but it depends on where you're trying to click like and i i, under, I appreciate that you don't want to experiment with it in the um in the middle of a service because you'll That's lose this. Right. Yeah. But what I would, but here's where I'm going to suggest the experiment. So once the talk show is ending, and you don't mind if you get if you lose this anyway, look at it real closely and try to find like um, I have to look at YouTube here. Anyway, try to find one of the places that click like that is different from the one you've been clicking on, and and check and just try it and see if that'll work because you won't okay. care if you lose us at that point anyway because it's over. That's and so and so and then if, and then if it works that time then you know where it is. If it doesn't work, then try a different place the next time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because that way, but only do it at the end because then it doesn't matter. Then you're then that's a great time to experiment and it won't matter if you if you if you click away. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. So yeah. I want to really thank John once again for another very engaging and informative session. Tomorrow our guest is Adam Wade live from Australia. And for him, this production starts at five o'clock in the morning. So for us, it's only three o'clock in the afternoon. So there's <laughs> no reason why anybody here cannot make it. So I hope to see everybody again here tomorrow. And again, thank you so much, John. Thank all of you. This was wonderful. I love sitting under the pine tree with you. <laughs> Thanks, John. <laughs>